Hello and welcome to Scrappy Loom Sewing. I'm JC Joellen and today I would like to show you a reverse applique technique that I used to make this baby quilt behind me. It was really easy, it was fun, it went really fast actually and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. So I'll let you see it a little closer and then I'll tell you what you need and we'll get started. <clears throat> okay. So, to get started, you will need four prints, all different with quite a bit of contrast. You want a lot of contrast with this. And um, you need 16 by 16 inch squares of each print. Then you need two prints that are 11 by 16. They can be one of two of the same or you can do different ones. I chose the same because I want them to be reversed in color too. So the yellow background here is the applique here or the reverse applique and then the background here is the applique on this one and then the same here. So to get started I am going to need four 16 inch squares of fabric. I'm going with a pink, an orange, a yellow, and a purple. And then I've got two uh, prints that are 11 by 16. These will be the reverse appliques. You will also need some two and a half inch strips, the width of the fabric, or you can use uh, jelly roll strips. You will need some scrap appliques, and if you don't know how to make those, I have a video that will teach you that. I will put a link down at the bottom of this video for that. You need some embroidery floss for your stems on your flowers. You need a nonstick pressing sheet. Two 11 by 16 inch rectangles of stitch witchery. You need two templates. I used a tulip and a cat. Uh, you will need freezer paper to make your templates. To do that, you just take two pieces of freezer paper large enough to encompass the applique shape. You put the shiny side down on your ironing board. You put the next shiny side on top of that. Uh, the next, the second sheet on top of that, you press it with your iron and until it's nice and flat. Then you draw your shape out and um, that gives you your template. Very simple. You need a half yard of a print for the first border, which is the yellow. And you need about a little more than an eighth of a yard for the second border. And it measures about finished about 40 by 40, give or take a, just a little bit. Um, and I believe that is everything. Oh, and you need some starch. Now this is light. I normally use the heavy, but I've got, that's all the, the store had at the time, so I grabbed it and I'm using it up. It's working pretty good. though. Okay, so once you've got your templates cut out, and what you, the shapes, you want to pick shapes that are simple. That you can cut out in one continuous line. Um, you don't want pieces. You want it just to be one, one piece. Just keeps it simple. So once you've got your templates uh, cut out, you would take your fabric, and I've already got these two done, so I'm going to show you with a different fabric. I'm going to show you how to adhere the stitch witchery. It's very simple. So you need a hot iron. I'm going to use my pressing pad. You would take the fabric that you're going to use. I'm just using this fabric as a sample to show you how to do the stitch witchery. Now on the wrong side of your fabric, <coughs> you will put your stitch witchery down just a little bit away from the edge. So you don't get it on your ironing board. And then you will put your um, non-stick pressing sheet on top of that. And press it down. No steam.
and you can see when it's melted it starts out looking like a white web and as it melts it goes clear doesn't take very long at all I like stitch witchery because it is lightweight easy to sew through it really doesn't change the, the, the behavior of the fabric very much at all and it works really well. It doesn't gum up your machine, doesn't gum up your needle. So once it's cooled off, then you can pull this, the uh, nonstick pressing sheet off. Normally I'd let it cool a little longer, but this is fine too. And then now I've got Stitch Witcher attached to that. Now once you do that, <clears throat> oh my sheet tour, it's getting old. Once you have done that, you will flip it over and make sure you've got the stitch witchery side on top of the pressing sheet. And you will press your template to the fabric. Leaving enough space between the edge of the fabric and the edge of the template to encompass a quarter inch seam and have some space between the applique and the seam. So I'm doing it about an inch away. Then you press this down on your fabric, and it will stick. It will stick to the fabric. And you can use them quite a few times before it stops sticking. This one's not sticking as well as when it was new, but it's still good enough for me to use it. But when they're brand new, they stick really well, and you can use them multiple times before that starts to become a problem. Okay, I'll pull my pressing sheet off. Once it's cool, I will then cut around my shape really neatly. You want to do it in one continuous line. You want one, one piece for the applique when it's done, and you want the skeleton that's left over the background to be in one piece as well, because you're going to use that for your reverse applique. So anyway, then I would just cut all the way around here. And you end up with a applique like this. And the skeleton of that applique like this. So now I'm going to have two appliques, the applique and the reverse applique. And to make the reverse applique, I would then take a piece of contrast fabric and stick it behind the skeleton. And you can use your template to make sure you've got it right so that you're not making it too wide or too narrow. So that you've got the placement correct. Once you've got it in place, you press that down. And now you can use a little steam. Not a whole lot, but a little bit of steam. once you've got that nice and pressed down, you now have your reverse applique. So it's just that simple. And I will show you the ones I've done with the fabric that I'm going to use for my new quilt. Came out like this. This is the reverse applique. And once you've got the reverse applique down, you will go to your sewing machine and you would do a zigzag stitch all the way around the design. I use the contrast there, thread so you can see it. And there's my reverse applique. You will then take this part, 
the actual applique and press it to the front of one of your background squares, one of your 16 inch squares. <clears throat> and when you do that, you end up with a shape like this. So now I have two appliques. I've got my applique and my reverse applique. And all I did was press the skeleton on top of a piece of fabric and then press the applique on top of a background fabric. Zigzag stitch around both of them. And we end up with a design like this. Now I've got two appliques. Then you do the same thing with the cat. And you end up with a reverse applique. Reverse means the applique is from the back. <clears throat> now you could go around here and trim this off if you wanted to. I'm not going to, but you can. Reduces the bulk if you're going to hand stitch or something, but I'm machine stitching, so it doesn't matter. And then I've got a, an applique. Applique is on top. So this is applied to the background. It's put on top and pressed down onto it. That's the applique. The reverse applique is from the back, filling the hole. And there's my reverse applique. So I'm making two appliques at once. All right. Now once you've got those done, you can set those aside. Next, you would take your two and a half inch strips and you'll sew two together. You'll end up with four sets like this. You will then take this, your strip set, and you will cut two and a half inch seg segments out of it. <clears throat> First straighten your edge. And then you'll cut two and a half inch strips. And you end up with segments like this. Now you'll take two of these. Making sure not to put the same print up against each other. And you'll nest these. Nest the seams. Then you press, you butt these seams up against each other tightly. Make sure your edge is straight. Then you sew down here, a quarter of an inch. You will end up with four patches. Then you'll take these four patches and you will sew four of them together. Twice. You need two of those. And then you'll take another one. You end up with the set like this. Two of these. And then you'll take nine of those and sew them together. Nine four patches. And you'll end up with a strip like this. Now, <clears throat> once you've got that done, you'll take your kitty cat block. And on the kitty cat, I did a flower. I put a heart, double heart in their chest. I took a small heart and a medium-sized heart scrap, okay? Layered them on top of each other and put them on the cat's chest. <clears throat> and then I stitched these down. Stitch the center, center heart first and then the outer heart. Once you stitch the center heart, you don't need pins anymore because it's in place. And then you can stitch the outer edge of this one, zigzagging. Then I took a flower, a large circle, and a small circle, layered those, put them next to the cat, and stitched around the first, the small circle, then the large circle, and then the outer edge of the flower. I start in the center because once I do that, it holds everything in place. I don't need pins anymore. After that, I put my leaves in place. Stitched around those edges with a zigzag. Then I took my floss. I used the whole, the full thickness. I didn't, you know, separate the threads. Not at the end. And just did a running stitch. Actually, I started at the flower and worked my way down. 
So coming up from the back underneath the flower, I just brought my needle up and then just did a running stitch. You take a stitch in, go under and come back up and you want the space between the two stitches to be the same length as the stitch. I did that because it's very quick. I mean, it took no time at all to do this hand sewing. And it's just that simple. And then the runny stitch comes out like that. And I did that all the way down to the bottom of the block. And then I did from that stem, I did from the flowers to the stem, excuse me, this way to the stem and then to the stem. And that one's done. Did the same thing on the next one. Except I used tulips. I took three tulip scrapliques. Place them kind of like this. You want to make sure you leave enough space over here to have a quarter inch seam without catching your applique in. And they don't have to be perfect. Flowers don't grow perfect. Took two hearts for this one. Layered them and put them on the kitty's chest. Place the large leaf and the small leaf. And I kind of overlap the small leaf on the kitten, on the cat. You don't have to do that, but that's how I wanted mine. Let me just add some dimension, some extra dimension. And then you do another running stitch from the tulip down, from each tulip into the stem, from each leaf into the stem. And that was done. Then the tulip. I placed a butterfly on there. And again, you want to make sure you leave enough space between the edge for a seam without, without catching the uh, applique. Stuck myself. And then I took two leaves and layered them on top of the leaves on the tulip for added dimension. I just kind of overlap them, but not directly on top of each other. Stitched around those. And then that was done. Same thing on the other one. The great thing about the scrapliques is though they're the same, they're all slightly different because of the scrappiness. And then that was done. How easy is that? I didn't want mine the same things right up against each other, so I, I did them diagonally.
Okay. Then you take your sashings. And I will sew one of the short ones between these two blocks. So you put these two right sides together like this. Stitch down the seam. Open it up. Do the same thing with this side. Then do the same thing down here. I'm going to flip that because I don't want those two yellows the same together. And then you take your center sashing. Put it here. Oops. And, uh, that was just not going to stay up there. It's a little heavy, I think. And there you have it. And all you do is take a two and a half inch strip for your first border, and then a one inch strip for your one and a half inch strips for your second border. Sorry, two and a half inch strip for this first border, a one and a half inch strip for the second border. Just stitch a strip here. Here, or it's actually, I would sew the two together, slice them to the uh, length of your quilt, stitch it to this side, stitch it to that side, and then stitch across the top and the bottom. And then you have a finished quilt. And it was so easy, hard to explain that it was to do. Um, it was so much easier to do than trying to tell someone else how to do it. Um, but if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, Please leave them at the bottom, and I'll be sure to read them. And thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you next time. God bless you. Have a good one. Bye-bye.